Howdy y'all, it's your favorite trainer for the belt buckle. Today we're going to be talking about airplane exercise. We're going to get into the anatomy of the hip, one of the best exercises that help with prevention of any type of ACL injuries. Before we do that though, we want to cheers you. Happy hour. We got our little, uh, these mugs, cup holders, 17 muscles of the shoulder. Oh, nothing better than learning another nice Wednesday night. So let's take a look at this video. Video is of the airplane. So obviously your favorite trainer right there, progressive overload. We got those shirts on our website. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at hip anatomy. We have three muscles that are biarticulate that are going to originate on the lateral part. That's where I'm pointing at, which is gonna be your ASIS is. It's gonna come down to the lateral part of the knee. And that's gonna be your TFL. And then we're gonna have a muscle that's going to cross medially. That's my favorite muscle, that's your sartorius. And from the medial part into your tibia, you're gonna have the gracilis. And so when you bend your knee, you're compromising the length tension relationship and you're not gonna be able to optimize the force of those three muscles. Like I said, the three muscles being the sartorius, the TFL, and the gracilis. So we're focusing on frontal plane stability, which is gonna be your glute mean. Now this is one of my favorite exercises to do. You can do it with your clients before a workout to get the hip and the knee ready for some squatting and unilateral and some hinging. If you wanna kill two birds with one stone, we can get into, oh, 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 almost lost it. Good stability there, Chris, nice job. Some band pull aparts. This is a very difficult exercise. If you've never tried this, you're gonna see your brain is really firing a bunch right here. And so that's not only gonna get with horizontal abduction, you're gonna be getting your, your mid traps, lower traps, your rhomboid major and minor, and also your external rotators. So this is a posterior deltoid and infraspinatus teres minor. Great exercise to hit upper body weakness as well as potential hip and knee problems. So let's take a closer look at, I'm gonna switch screens here, and we're gonna to go to our slides that we use on our internship. If you've not checked out our internship, we are online, daily classes Monday through Friday. You gotta to talk to me just like this. I'm not in my hotel room, I'm in the classroom normally. And we get into uh, hip anatomy, so we take a look at the flexors. So your iliopsoas, which is comprised of your iliacus and your psoas major, which is your main flexor. And then we have the pectineus gracilis, TFL, adductor, think of Major League Baseball, MLB for magnus longus and brevis, rectus femoris, biarticulate at the knee and the hip, and your sartorius, and that's the one that, love that sucker, because it just does so many cool things, it abducts, it externally rotates, it flexes the knee, it's just an awesome muscle, very, very articulate or um, unique. We're gonna take a look, closer look here in a second. So here is your psoas major coming off the lumbar spine, your iliacus together forming the agonist for hip flexion, which is just in the seated position, I'm, I'm flexed at the hip. Your rectus femoris, which goes into your quad tendon, patellar tendon. And so the reason why this exercise is so great is because these two muscles, we have the lateral with the TFL medial and sartorius, and right where your ischial tuberosity is, that's right here, it's your butt bone. That's where the gracilis is gonna originate and inserts down here to the tibia as well. So when you bend the knee, what happens is they're influenced by position of the knee. So you limit their function, and that has to do with the length touch relationship. Remember, cross bridge attachments that can form at any given joint angle, and muscles contract best at optimal length. And so when that knee is flexed, it kind of think of like a light switch, it's coming down. And so therefore the glute med, which is a frontal plane stabilizer as well as abductor, you have some fibers anteriorly that will work with internal rotation, some posterior fibers that work with external rotation, but it's primarily working in the frontal plane. So you can really target that muscle. And we've, we've seen that in, with injuries of the ACL. So remember with the knee anatomy, we have, I'll flip there real quick. We have the ACL, the PCL, the MCL, and then your LCL. So those four ligaments, a ligament connects bone to bone. Uh, just when you have uh, any type of frontal instability or transverse and you can't decelerate very well, then that you're just gonna have some negative space in there and the knee becomes vulnerable. So let's take a look at one more thing online. So here's our anatomy. You can check out our website, showfitness.com. And this will have the breakdown of what the, the muscles do. So 
Again, my favorite sartorius comes from the Latin word tailor, because that's how they used to sit. And with cross legged, it's a badass photo right there. Is that a cat? What's he doing? What's he doing? That looks like fun. So then you have the origin, which is your ASIS anterior front side, superior, which is above, iliac spine. And the insertion is going to be medial tibial tuberosity. So if you just grab your kneecap like this, the medial tibial is going to be where your uh, middle finger would go. So hold your, your knee like that, and it's going to be on the middle part. So here's an example of the, the skeletal anatomy. So that's that ischial tuberosity right here. And you have the femur going into the acetabellum, greater and lesser trochantar. And the actions are flexion, which is bringing your leg up in the sides of the plane, abduction, frontal plane, external rotation will be transverse. The knee is going to flex, so pull it back, slight internal rotation when the knee is flexed, and then also unweighted. So by lifting up your leg, and you just twist your knee in internally, you'll see that you, your sartorius will get activated. Here's, I like the Gray's Anatomy uh, textbooks. We're hoping to get our own with some cool koozies. Maybe we'll give them out to you for free. But just, the photos are really great. Like, I've seen too many textbooks that just suck with anatomy, but I like this one. So your QL, and how it goes from that last rib into your uh, posterior superior leg spine. You got your psoas right there. And with these, anytime you see white, it's going to be like some kind of fascia or ligament or tendon. There's your TFL on the lateral side. And then the TFL, as well as the, the glute max and the mead, they go into the IT track, which goes down to the tibia. Remember, we aren't foam rolling our IT band. Uh, we're foam rolling more of your vastus lateralis, a very large muscle right there, you can see right there. So the sartorius wraps in, comes down medially, and starts down in here, right next to the patella ligament. And then we're going to go over common issues with the flexors, which would be your sartorius. And our partners at the prehab guys have some good stuff here. So while we're on them, talk about our next internship. So we have classes that are constantly running online. Classes Monday through Friday, live just like this. We have Monday through Thursday, I teach. We go over the science programming. Friday, Danny gets into social media, the queen of social media, how to grow your brand, how to develop a website. We help you with streams of revenue to be a successful personal trainer. You got to show up internships over certifications, you will become successful. So about 50% of our trainers are already certified. Uh, a lot of them are trying to better their, their craft. If you take a look at the prehab guys, they're one of our partners that we consult with on a regular basis. I really like their, uh, taking a look at the airplane. So hip strengthening should be stable of any rehab or strength and conditioning program. Musculature is capable of generating large amounts of torque used for explosive and athletic movements. This and hips are the key to trunk and core stability and therefore balance. I think it's important to kind of undress right there. Don't get excited. But people use a lot of the balance. Oh, we got to work on our balance. Remember, balance is just stability and strengthening. So when you stand on one leg, we're not you know, unilateral creatures generally, especially in the gym. We just do a lot of sagittal stuff and bilateral, so squatting and, and leg extension, leg curls, leg pressing. So we don't work on just one leg at a time. And so the hip musculature isn't very strong. And so when you stand on one leg, your quote unquote balance is off. But the reason your balance is off because you lack core stability and strength. So analogy that they like to use is um, it's like a house on a cliff. You could build the biggest and most glorious house, six pack on the cliffs overlooking the ocean. But if it slips, stilts and foundation, which are the hips upon which this mansion sits upon is weak, the house will undoubtedly collapse. So now we've determined that targeting the hips to improve dynamic stability is but most important. However, our ability to balance is determined in large part by not only hip stability, but also ankle stability. So how do we tease out ankle contributions to balance while focusing on solely on hip stability? Airplanes. And so they're doing it right here on a BOSU ball, which just makes it a lot more challenging. And just make sure that back foot is off the ground. And again, this is an awesome exercise to try if you have any clients that have had prior or maybe constant knee problems, maybe you had an ACL in the past. Doing this before workout, you could also do this part of our programming with a core pattern, a core pattern, and you can do it as an accessory. So as your B in the program. So let's say a client comes in and they want to build their booty, you could do a hip thrust first into a pull up, and then you could do this airplane exercise if they had knee problems, or if they had knee issues or hip issues, 
In the past, you could do this as a warm up. If you're working with athletes, specifically soccer players, soccer players are as high as five to seven times more likely to blow out an ACL. I would have them do this regularly. Yes, even on a BOSA ball, even though I am. But this is uh, okay in this situation. So hopefully you guys like this video today. Please comment below. We always appreciate your, your feedback. What would you like to see more of? How we can help you further your career and training? If you haven't sat in on one of our classes, we offer the first one for free. We do put them into the Patreon platform so you can watch them at any time, even if you can't get access to the live ones. So I will not be drinking in class in the morning, only coffee after five. I switched to beer. Have a great day, y'all. Keep on showing up. Make sure to follow us and subscribe. Have a great day.